Welcome to Hogwarts Park and the start to a new community build that we are going to build together. So make sure to subscribe if you want to participate in this magical adventure and to leave your suggestions for this park in a comment down below. Hey guys, I'm back! And to start off this bumpy ride, yeah, take it away, I made a 40 by 40 square grid of path so I could create our canvas on the Yosemite Square map. And I thought it would be only fitting if we took uh, a simplified version of the Hogwarts crest with the four house corners and turned it into a playground. And uh, as you might remember, if you saw my recreation of Isla Sorna, and if you did, I know you're waiting for the tour, but rest assured I'm working on it. Uh, if you saw this, you know that I struggle with this grid technique. So this time I try to connect the dots approach. I started with marking where the outline of the crest crosses the grid lines, but, but <laughs> it didn't take long for my brain to get fuzzy and my eyes to get blurry and for me to lose orientation. <laughs> I kid you not. By the time I reached this first, uh, what do you call it, loop-de-loop, -loop, the crest does, I was practically blind and thus decided to continue freehand, which led to me making the loop too small, which I didn't realize at the time. But what I did realize is that neither of these methods was going to work for me. So I switched to marking only significant points where the lines change direction and then connecting those loosely. And that worked much better for me. Although I still had a little bit of trouble finding the right grid squares, so I went on to drawing horizontal and vertical lines until they crossed each other, and that finally did the trick for me. And when I had the base shape down, I did the rest freehand because, well, honestly, I don't know what it is about these grid lines that give me a hard time. But I solemnly swear to Merlin's beard that I feel like a mosquito looking at a zebra when I'm working with this grid. However, it still remains the best method to accurately recreate any shape you want. So, I don't know, give it a try and find out if your brain is as incapacitated as mine. I'm putting Evo's tutorial for this in the description for you. Um, so... Let me tell you what I think this park will be while we're watching me draw this crest. And I think it's not going to be, it's definitely not going to be a muggle park with a Hogwarts theme. No, I'm thinking more along the lines of what if Hogwarts wasn't a school but a park for wizards? of course, with all kinds of, you know, secret passages, whimsical and quite frankly, dangerous attractions and magic in this park. The answer to all questions isn't 42, but magic. And I love that, you know, the dinosaurs could be dragons and all kinds of other magical creatures or actual dinosaurs. That's for us to decide. So I'm thinking, herbology greenhouses and a care of magical creatures station stuff like that are a must and i already have like some kind of an idea for the one-eyed witch passage um yeah but i'm really looking forward to our ideas as to which kind of attractions and exhibits uh, the founders of this park, Salazar, Slytherin, Godric, Gryffindor, Helga, Hufflepuff, and Rowena Ravenclaw, Ravenclaw would have built in their Hogwarts park of dragons and creatures. We? What a load of rubbish. And I I owe a big thank you to my patrons who came up with the idea. Thank you. I hope you're as excited as I am. All of you, I mean. I'm really happy to read your thoughts on this. By the way, are you as Potter manic as I am? What house would you be in? I'm, I think I'm a Ravenclaw, although I frequently fashion myself as a Gryffindor too, so... But honestly, I'm Hermione through and through. I have the bushy hair. I'm an insufferable know-it-all who struggles, like, only to know when to shut up and just let it go. Uh, I'd go into a hunger strike for house self-rights any day, and I have cats. On the other hand, 
I see some resemblance in character with Luna Lovegood as well. And I'm simply in love with Professor Trelawney. Um, yeah, well, anywho, back to the build. Um, let's address the elephant in the room. To be completely honest, I was kind of hesitant to do this build at first uh, because, well, as you know, I'm playing Jurassic World Evolution 2 Vanilla. And I know that in order for this to become as great and magical as it could be and should be, I would have to use mods. But I'm not ready for mods. And I, and I, and you know, having mulled this idea over for a while, we can still manage to turn this idea into something really fun. We just have to broaden our minds. We must look beyond. Together we shall cast ourselves into the future. When I was done with the painting, I secured the entire shape with water and added the big lake outside of the crest. And because Hogwarts is somewhere in the mountains, I decided to not make this an island, but to be surrounded by mountains. Hence this map and hence the water. Uh, so I didn't need to worry about keeping the crest shape untouched uh, while spending the next three hours creating mountains for which I used this auto paint feature we've always had but no one ever uses and I was curious to see why that is and um, my findings are inconclusive or rather I have no idea why we are ignoring this feature because it works like a charm I mean sure it's not always giving you the result you want or need but for something like this, a backdrop of some sort, it seems to be a wonderful life hack that frankly saved me quite some time because as I said, creating these mountains all around the map took me about three hours without painting them. In total, this build took me about four and a half hours and which is why I decided to show you an edited resume of the process with a lower speed instead of, you know, going full speed and showing you the entire thing. This is just six to eight times, sometimes only four times faster than real time instead of showing you all of it, but sped up by 20. Because I don't know about you guys, but even I have trouble following my own footage at that speed. So I imagine it must be even harder for you, but you know, feel free to leave me a comment if this is too slow for your taste, because maybe I'm just an old hag and you're yawning at this, who knows? And I hope you're not feeling like you're missing out on something because of that, because I promise I'm showing you all you need to see of this process. And one could even argue if I really needed to show you all this amount of terrain work and later on adding foliage. So don't worry, you're not missing anything. Okay, so... Um, I tried to make these mountains sort of fit in with the rest of the environment, you know, so this beautiful landscape won't be hidden from view. And uh, I tried sort of reproducing or rather continuing what you see in the background. So I decided to add a river and pretend it's a continuation of the canyon and waterfall we see in the back. Maybe we can have it come out as a waterfall on the inside and um, have it snake through the park or whatever. And what you see me do or saw me do here is that I also tried to sort of create shapes of the mountains that would fit into the crest or around the crest. So, you know, I created this, uh, what looks like a croissant <laughs> fitting into the shape of the of the crest and uh, tried to add lots of ridges and veins and have them interlock. And uh, I don't know, I thought this made an interesting effect. I liked it, it gives depth to the background. And uh, now we're nearing the end of the creation of the mountains. We're back at the lake that I put at the opposite side of the river because there's another lake in the distance. <laughs> and at first I thought I could create the illusion of both uh, lakes being one big one. But of course, 
that was never going to work, which is fine, honestly. Anyhow, when um, the mountains were done, I deleted the water, which was quite satisfying and a little premature because I had to add it again to be able to sink the four house corners down. So the whole thing looks like it was stamped into the landscape by magic of course. Uh, and I just I just love adding elevation this way. To me, it's not nearly as tedious as not securing the areas uh, you don't want to lower or raise, but having to go back and forth, correcting the many ways the terrain tool can be, let's call it uncooperative, and ruin everything. It's so satisfying to do it this way, you know, securing the outer perimeter and then just sink what you want to sink. Awesome. Oh, and I decided later that it would be even better if the middle section, which I guess will be our entry section, if the central elevation was even higher than the rest. And of course, the path that is going in front of the lake, I felt this had to be at least a little bit elevated. And uh, so I went back in, uh, added the water again, secured my outline of the crests, whatever the central thing is, and did my thing. And once that was done, I covered the mountain with trees and shrubs while leaving the tops of the ridges bare because I feel that gives more depth to the landscape. The ridges and veins sort of blend in together if they're completely covered in trees. And when I saw that, I was like, why did I even spend all that time doing all these veins and ridges? Yeah, and uh, to be honest, why did I? Now I'm deleting some of the ground so you know the we have a little bit of a shore to the lake but why did i create all these veins and ridges because <laughs> In hindsight, I said I wanted to have the mountains resemble those in the background, and they don't, because they have a completely different shape. They're not as veiny, they're more uh, rounded, but steeper. So the elevation is a little st uh, yeah, f steeper, and uh, but that is something we can't do. So uh, yeah, well, uh, how? why did I? This is, by the way, the time I realized that my illusion of the two lakes fusing into together into one another was not going to work. My cat Nuri is doing shenanigans in the back. I hope you're not distracted by her. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, these mountains actually don't look anything like the mountains of the surroundings. Uh, but I've come to sort of tell myself that uh, that adds to the, the 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 idea of this whole thing right here being created by magic, and so it's okay that these mountains look different. There's something off with them. Uh, this is me trying. I have no idea. I just I didn't I didn't fulfill my mission. <laughs> so yeah. And that is honestly all the amount of detail I've added to them so far. So basically none at all, because we don't know yet which parts will be visible from which perspective and stuff like that. So it really wouldn't make sense to do any further work on them for now. So that's it. Four and a half hours later and we have a perfect canvas for our Hogwarts park. And as I said, I'm looking forward to your suggestions about dinosaurs, exhibit, magic, fun, whatever you want me to build here. I'll do it. Just tell me in the comments and I'll be happy to oblige as long as it fits with the whole park idea. So I hope this was fun for you. Even if you are not into the whole Potterverse, maybe this still gave you some ideas for your future parks. And I hope to see you soon. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm planning on doing a first public live stream this month. So far, I've only done patrons only. And um, in this live stream, we're going to start a new park build that I'm equally excited about. So as I said, stay tuned and keep a lookout for the live stream announcement in my community tab. And of course, there will be regular Hogwarts Park episodes every weekend, I guess, Sundays, although I'm trying to get them ready earlier, but we see how that went. <laughs> so long. I thank you for watching. Take care and bye-bye.